Hey guys. Yes, mate. Say again. Um, we're just waiting for them to arrive now. It, it shouldn't be too far away. Um, I'll call the studio or, or give you a heads up as soon as they come. I'm just waiting out in the corridor watching for them to come, so it shouldn't be too far away. So we shall stand down for weather because this is going to happen uh, any moment. Uh, yes, I am, Carl. We are actually in the briefing room at the moment. They've been in crisis talks. Uh, Julie Gillard is here, also Premier Anna Bly, the heads of uh, all the emergency rescue teams. Uh, they've been behind locked doors for around about an hour now. We are expecting this briefing to start uh, any moment, and that will be an update on the, re uh, the uh, search and rescue effort and the relief that's been going on right throughout the morning. And that's just about to happen now, Carl. She's coming now. Prime Minister's on the way, guys. Down the front, mate. Mm -hmm. like down the front, mate. Like please, mate. Here they are, they're walking down the corridor. Yeah, do you want me to introduce? Okay, bye. rolling. Well, good morning. Uh, I welcome to Queensland the Prime Minister and Chief of Defence Angus Houston as our two, two of our largest cities, Ipswich and our capital city of Brisbane, prepare and begin to experience the worst natural disaster in our history. As our city prepares for that disaster, we are also managing a number of major incidents uh, in other areas of Queensland, and I'd like to work through some of the issues that are unfolding in those towns and cities uh, first, and then go to the Brisbane and Ipswich area. Uh, today, because of the clearing of the rain, we will see a major search and rescue effort into the Lockyer Valley, searching for those people who remain missing. Very sad news overnight with uh, further missing person notifications made to the Queensland Police and the number they are now searching for uh, is over 90. We can confirm that at this stage we have no confirmations of further deaths but we do expect that our emergency search and rescue teams today may face a very difficult and emotional task as they search for and fi possibly find bodies in some of those isolated areas. Uh, our thoughts are with those workers and they're particularly with those families who are continuing to hope and anxiously wait for news of their loved ones. Uh, we hope that they have good news at the end of today, although we do stress that it may take several days of major search and rescue efforts given the damage in some of these areas to properties uh, and to local terrain. The coroner uh, is moving to the Lockyer Valley today to assist with these efforts and we have eight specialist counselling teams including people particularly trained in uh, counselling children uh, and grief counsellors and they will be locating across the towns in that valley today. In other parts of regional Queensland we're continuing to see floodwaters rise. Uh, the town of Dolby still has 125 people uh, in an evacuation centre, although the water is now stable there. In Chinchilla, we have a major flood incident occurring with waters continuing to rise and current advice is that Chinchilla is likely to experience a flood peak over and above what they experienced about 10 days ago. 
The town of Condamine was completely evacuated yesterday evening for the second time in 10 days. And they are likely to be out of their home again for a period of time. Uh, the uh, towns of Gundawindi and Texas are also facing rising waters. Uh, Gundawindi is expected to be uh, within potentially half a metre of its levee banks. Uh, that could see those levees ri uh, collapse, and we are keeping a very careful watch on Gundawindi. This is a town of some 5,000 people. Uh, the town of Texas, uh, a, a relatively small town of about 600 people, are also seeing uh, waters rising and evacuations have started in Texas. The good news is that the water in Rockhampton is falling, although very, very slowly. Similarly, the water in Gympie is falling, but that water from Gympie is now making its way to Meriburra, and Meriburra can expect to see its waters rise uh, and uh, reach a peak in, uh, tomorrow. Uh, in Bundaberg, we are also seeing some minor rises and uh, some new flooding occurring in Bundaberg. I give you all of that information so that you can appreciate the scale of this incident and appreciate that our emergency teams are working across a number of areas across an enormous a part of Queensland. We also note that as we uh, start to prepare here in the capital city that many of these towns are experiencing this event for the second time. I think we need to draw inspiration from their resilience and draw inspiration and courage from the experiences they've had and are continuing to face. If I can move now to Ipswich and Brisbane. In Ipswich at 7.30am this morning the water had risen to 18.9 metres. Uh, there is some slightly good news in Ipswich and that is that the expected peak has been revised down from 22 metres to 20.5. However, they experienced uh, 20.7 in 1974. So we are in a 1974 flood situation in Ipswich. I stress that uh, in making those 1974 comparisons, both the city of Ipswich and the city of Brisbane are vastly different places than they were in 1974. We have a, a significantly higher populations. We have a more dense uh, uh, construction. We have people living in high-rise uh, units where in 1974 nothing existed. So many more people are expected to be affected by this event, even though the water levels may be relatively similar. So, for example, in Ipswich today, at that uh, level, we expect it to peak today at 20.5. That expe we expect that that will inundate and affect 4,000 properties in Ipswich. 1,500 are currently uh, affected by floodwaters. We have 10 evacuation centres operational in Ipswich and 1,200 people in those evacuation centres, many more out of their homes and staying with friends and relatives. The towns, the nearby towns of Tagulawa and Esk, are completely isolated. They're not uh, necessarily experiencing flood water, but are completely isolated by cut roads, and we'll be getting supplies into those towns as soon as possible. Here in Brisbane, uh, the water is currently at around 3.1 metres, and it is rising. Uh, it'll, we expect it to rise relatively slowly this morning, but much more quickly after lunch this afternoon. By this afternoon, we expect it to peak around 4.5 metres and rise to 5.5 metres tomorrow morning, Thursday morning. Sometime around 4am tomorrow morning, we expect to see those waters peak around the 5.5 mark. In 1974, it peaked at 5.45. So by 4am by tomorrow morning, we expect Brisbane to be experiencing flooding of 1974 proportions or, and slightly higher. We have an evacuation centre established at uh, the RNA showgrounds. There are currently 182 people registered to uh, accommodate there overnight, but of course we expect that number to swell significantly throughout the day. Those people who are unable to get to higher ground uh, with friends or family, uh, can I please encourage you to make early registration and early arrangements with the evacuation uh, centres. The first centre is the RNA showgrounds. Uh, from 8am this morning, the second centre was activated at the QE2 uh, stadium on the south side of Brisbane. The uh, Lord Mayor advises me that he is also speaking now with major churches to see whether it's possible to utilise uh, church halls and other church facilities in local neighbourhoods should that be necessary. 
We have the very significant uh, uh, issues arising on the Brisbane River. Many of you will have seen the images of pontoons and boats attached to pontoons floating down the river. We have uh, salvage operations occurring to ensure that we don't see further damage caused by those floating objects uh, running into businesses and homes. We have a very significant operation under, being undertaken right now across the river from the Regatta Hotel where uh, a large barge uh, known as the Island, and many people in Brisbane will know that boat, uh, it is uh, at risk of coming loose of its moorings and there are efforts and operation happening right now to secure uh, that facility. Uh, throughout today, uh, there will be a number of uh, critical issues that will be managed by our emergency teams. Firstly, the Port of Brisbane will be closed, is now closed and will only be open for emergency supplies under police uh, and uh, harbour authorities' uh, escort. Traffic management uh, plans are being put into place as we see power cut off in some areas, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about power in a moment, but as we see power cut off, we are likely to see some traffic lights out around the CBD and parts of Brisbane. A very significant traffic plan is being put into place and police will be doing everything in their power to manage that today. But in a large capital city, I think you can all imagine the sort of difficulties they will face. This is likely to be a very significant problem with roads cutting from localised flooding uh, and traffic lights out. Can I, one of the biggest messages I send to the people in the city of Brisbane today uh, and Ipswich is do not travel if you do not have to. It is a danger to the rest of, Queens, rest of the population to have people out travelling unnecessarily. What that will do is take police and emergency resources off the front line where they are needed to protect and save lives. Please, this incident is not a tourist event. This is a deeply serious natural disaster. Stay in your homes. Do not travel unless it is absolutely necessary. The second message is for those who haven't already done so, find a friend in high places. Uh, there are many parts of Brisbane that will not be affected. Brisbane is a very hilly city. Many of us have friends and family living on those hills. Please, if you are not going to be affected, reach out to a neighbour, reach out to a friend or a family member. We will ensure all of the uh, everything is being done to evacuate people to official evacuation centres. But this could last for several days and I can assure you that you would rather be, if possible, with family than in one of these centres. The water that we are preparing for is a worst case scenario in Brisbane. We anticipate some 2,100 streets will be affected, that 19,700 residences are likely to experience flooding across their entire property. We expect a further 3,500 commercial properties to similarly experience flood water across the entire property. Uh, this is a very significant event. It will create enormous disruption and dislocation. We are already seeing the beginning of this flood. The Brisbane River has broken its banks at Yeronga near the Corso. We are seeing flooding starting this morning in places like Milton, Tawong, Jindalee, the Graceville area, and we are likely to see more and more as the day progresses. The fact that this is peaking tomorrow does not mean that we won't see very dangerous situations emerging right now. I think we've all woken up in Brisbane to a very surreal experience. Uh, the sky is blue. We are facing an almost perfect Queensland summer day. We can take no comfort from that blue sky. The water and the rain have already done their damage. They are in the catchment and they are on their way down our river system. So please do not think, uh, do not take any comfort from the fact that we've got blue sky here this morning. Uh, can I just uh, conclude by acknowledging that uh, everybody out there, uh, no doubt, is experiencing this as a quite scary and frightening event. Can I say that I know in my bones that Queenslanders are up to this and that we can take it? And I know that because I know we have the best people on our front line. They are coming from all over Australia, from other states, SES, emergency workers, police from New Zealand and from uh, the Australian Defence Force. I know it because we have enormous resources that are now deployed uh, here in the South East and in other parts of Queensland, including a massive boost from the uh, Defence Forces, and uh, the Prime Minister will outline that in more detail. I also know that we are very strong and that we have enormous community spirit. This event will test us as it is testing people in regional Queensland. They have prevailed and the people here in the South East will equally prevail. Ladies and gentlemen, please keep updated throughout today. This is a rapidly moving event. Uh, I thank everybody to date for the marvellous effort. 
we've got, I think, the hardest times are still ahead of us. If I can invite the Prime Minister to uh, join me and to make some comments. Uh, Prime Minister, thank you for being in Queensland today. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much to the Premier for that introduction. And can I say to the Premier, it's been a genuine privilege to attend the State Disaster Management Committee meeting this morning and to hear directly what great work is being done by emergency service personnel right throughout Queensland. I'm here today with the Minister for Defence, Stephen Smith, with our Minister, Joseph Ludwig, who will concentrate on Queensland flood recovery. I'm joined by the Chief of the Defence Force, by my National Security Advisor and by the Head of Emergency Management Australia. And we have come to Queensland today to be in Brisbane to very visibly say that we are working with the people of Queensland shoulder to shoulder as they face this flood crisis. Uh, throughout the days of this flood crisis, the Australian Defence Force has done great work to support the people of Queensland. They've been out there each day as floodwaters have threatened. As the crisis has changed in its dimensions, we have stepped up Australian Defence Force efforts and we are taking a further step up today. We are bringing to bear an additional seven helicopters. That will mean that there are 15 helicopters available throughout Queensland and one of the biggest sources of work for those helicopters will be the very difficult, very urgent and occasionally heartbreaking task of search and rescue in the Lockyer Valley. We are also ensuring that we have more C-130 aircraft available. These are the aircraft capable of carrying food and supplies in order to resupply parts of Queensland, townships in Queensland that have become isolated and need food and supplies brought in by air. We will continue to work with the people of Queensland through the Australian Defence Force. We have several hundred Australian Defence Force personnel on a notice ready to move and during the course of the day more and more personnel will join the efforts in Brisbane uh, to assist with tasks like sandbagging. I understand that across Queensland and particularly in Ipswich and Brisbane today there would be many frightened people anxious about what is going to happen next. To those people I would say that the Australian Defence Force will be there providing support to the magnificent emergency personnel in Queensland to be working with them to support Queenslanders through this crisis. And of course we know that there are many Australians who are waiting very anxiously for news of loved ones who haven't been located since the wall of water hit Toowoomba and moved through the Lockyer Valley. That's why such a priority is being put on making helicopters available for the search and rescue task. At the same time, we will be continuing to support the people of Queensland with emergency payments and, of course, at the appropriate time when floodwaters uh, enable people to go back to their homes with grants to assist with recovery and rebuilding for families, for small businesses and for primary producers. But my task today is to give some information to those who might be leaving their homes now, who are evacuating now and who need emergency assistance. This is the first initial payment available with later payments uh, down the track when people are in recovery mode. Uh, in South East Queensland today, Centrelink offices are not staffed. Just like other major employers, uh, the Commonwealth has enabled Centrelink staff, many of whom live in flood-affected areas themselves in Brisbane and Ipswich, uh, to make appropriate arrangements for themselves and their family and to make sure that they are not moving uh, through uh, streets and causing the kind of uh, traffic and issues that the Premier referred to. Therefore, the best way of people getting Centrelink assistance today is to ring 180 in order to access emergency payments and support. We will also be having people uh, in recovery centres. For example, there are Centrelink staff in the recovery centre in Ipswich. A 1,000 Centrelink staff are focusing on Queensland flood efforts and making sure that they are getting appropriate information to the people of Queensland. 
The system is working well. We have made around 10,000 emergency payments. That's $17 million that has got into people's pockets as the first initial payment to help people through. And as I say, there are later payments when people are looking to replace household contents, going back to their small business or their farm, uh, engaging in clean-up and rebuilding. I also want to alert people to the fact that there are income support arrangements. There will obviously be people who cannot go about their ordinary work, employees who can't reach work, small business operators whose businesses are flooded and cannot be operated, primary producers who cannot get their goods to market. Uh, as I announced on Monday, uh, there are special income support payments available for people in those circumstances, and once again, they should access that 180 number. Uh, Premier, can I say to you and through you to the people of Queensland, Queensland has already faced some dark days, and there are dark days still ahead. But Australia is standing with you, working with Queensland to help Queensland through this crisis. And we will be there shoulder to shoulder, not only for the days ahead, but for the many months of recovery and rebuilding to come. And Premier, through you, can I also say a very big thanks to all of the emergency services personnel, to all of the volunteers, to all of the people in local communities, the local mayors, the local councillors, who are doing such a good job to lead their communities during a very difficult period and difficult time. I've seen firsthand today at the committee meeting I've just attended the professionalism and determination of the emergency services personnel of Queensland. It really is very heartwarming to see it, and my thanks go to everyone who is making a contribution. Premier, in um, Brisbane and Ipswich in particular, what are the worst affected areas at the moment? In the Brisbane area, the areas that we've started to see the first flooding are in uh, the Jindalee reach of the river, in the Milton and Tawong areas, uh, and in the South Brisbane uh, and Uronga reach of the river. But this is rapidly changing. Uh, you can expect to see more and more suburbs join that list very quickly over the next couple of hours. Uh, and I'm, I'm sorry, I can't give you a similar list for Ipswich, but I can say in Ipswich we already have 1,500 homes, so very significant sections of Ipswich. Uh, we're still getting final reports in from them. Uh, can I just say that uh, people in Ipswich last night really saw the water come up uh, quite dramatically and there's more to come, and that is what people in Brisbane will experience over the next uh, 24 to 48 hours. Can you confirm reports that there's been re-leasing in Ipswich and whether anyone has been possibly evacuated overnight? Uh, certainly we've uh, dealt with a couple of instances um, of stealing uh, in the Ipswich and uh, another area in uh, Gatton um, and Lockyer Valleys. Uh, we're following up on those, uh, but police have responded to those. Excuse me. Um, Sorry, I should say I understand there was one incident where police powers were used last night uh, to protect the safety of one individual. Uh, how long are you expecting the water levels to stick around in Brisbane? The current advice is that the water levels, once they peak at about 4am tomorrow morning, uh, could last at around that level at least until Saturday before they start going down. But there will be many people uh, for whom it doesn't go down enough for them to either access their home or their street for more days after that. So as these waters uh, rise reasonably quickly, they will move on, but it will take several days. That's why it's important not to be travelling around at the moment. Uh, if you decide to go off to the shops or to, the work, to your workplace unnecessarily, you may find yourself there for many days. Uh, the best place to be at the moment is at home. Now, the Commissioner earlier said there were uh, a couple of families stranded on rooftops out at Lowood and there was a, an emergency rescue operation happening out there. Is there any update on that? Uh, we have successfully rescued eight people from rooftops uh, in the Lowood area. Uh, I understand that uh, that involves a couple of families, so it was off, this, off a number of people off, uh, off uh, I think, two or three roofs. So there was a uh, rapid rising water in Lowood last night around 3am. Uh, people got to safety on rooftops. Early hour rescues, early morning rescues have seen all of those people rescued safely. I might just give one update because I've had a number of uh, inquiries and my office has been uh, uh, a number of people ringing in. I think uh, 
the hearts of many Australians were, um, were very touched and concerned by images on Monday night of a family sitting on top of a white car and the car was uh, appeared to be sinking in the Toowoomba incident. I can advise that involved a mother and a father and a child. The mother and uh, child have been located and are safe. The father is unfortunately one of those on the missing person list. So for all of those people who have been particularly concerned about that family, that was heart-rending images and, uh, and a great feeling of helplessness, I think, for everybody who saw it. Uh, I'm very relieved that the mother and child are safe, but as I said, we are still searching for the father in that case. Prime Minister, what else are you going to be doing up here today? And are you staying up here indefinitely? Uh, look, I will be staying in Brisbane for a period of time. Today I am intending to be briefed uh, by our commander, Luke Foster, who is commanding Queensland uh, Operation Flood Assist for us. Uh, I will travel to Inogra in order to uh, talk to him. Uh, and uh, meet directly with Defence Force personnel. Uh, obviously, I would like to get out and about too, uh, meeting the people of Queensland and talking to them as they deal with this flood situation. Uh, in terms of where that is possible, uh, obviously we'll be working with uh, Queensland and taking the necessary advice. Uh, to echo what the Premier is saying, obviously uh, none of us uh, want to uh, distract uh, from emergency efforts that are underway now, uh, but I do want to be out speaking to people on the ground. Uh, I've found in the visiting that I've done so far in Queensland that uh, you always learn something from talking to people and their direct experience, and then I can feed it back in to make sure that our government systems are responding directly to their needs. Um, Minister, can you commit to um, flood mitigation funding for Queensland, perhaps an expansion of the, of the Wyvernho Dam, which obviously isn't quite big enough, and um, perhaps for the Bureau of Meteorology, who said yesterday their computers were not up to scratch to identify what that, happened that, in the yeah, flood. Can I just comment on that? Because... Uh, I was at that press conference. That is not what the Bureau of Meteorology said. What they said was that currently available technology is not capable of resolution to the uh, degree that would enable an event like that to have been pinpointed. So I think it's very important to understand our Bureau of Meteorology has world-class, most cutting-edge equipment but the technology available, science is not quite at that stage yet. Science may well get there and protect us better in future, but it's not there yet. Premier, have you had the opportunity yet to sit back just for a moment and sort of cut yourself away from all the, the briefings that you get? Your electorate is going to be severely impacted here, maybe even your home. Have you had a chance to sit back and, and feel the emotion of what your residents and friends are probably going to be feeling? Uh, along with many other people in Queensland, uh, uh, my family is not immune to these experiences. My mother's uh, house is in one of the low-lying streets of West End. Uh, my brother and my sons evacuated her yesterday. Uh, she's now at my house and I'm very happy about that. <laughs> so that's uh, certainly a, a peace of mind for me and it's uh, a reminder to me that there are thousands of other people going through exactly that experience. My constituents will be severely impacted. Uh, the suburbs of East Brisbane, Norman Park, uh, South Brisbane will all be uh, flooded. Uh, we also have parts of Brisbane that weren't, that look completely different than they did in 1974. South Bank did not exist. Uh, you know, we will have major areas of the city flooding uh, in ways that we will find hard to predict and experience. So I can say honestly to people, I do know what it's uh, like to be out there worrying about your own family. This is a frightening time, but if we're all calm, if we all stick together, uh, if we all reach out to each other, then I am absolutely confident that together with our emergency personnel and the Army, that we will prevail in this event. There are reports that there are several children stuck in a childcare centre out at Withcott and a couple of babies are there. Are they are emergency service personnel any closer to rescuing those children? No, certainly there is no flood activity in the Withcott area at the moment. I think what you're referring to... Um, certainly that is the case. Um, the road system out in the Lockyer Valley is tenuous, to say the least, um, and we're doing everything we can to address all of the calls for assistance that we have. Are there any emergency rescue operations currently underway that you can detail, like people standing on the roofs in Lowood? Is there anything that you can explain to us now? Uh, certainly there are situations uh, happening right now in the Ipswich and Brisbane areas. I don't have particulars of those, but I do know that we're responding to multiple calls for assistance as are all emergency service personnel. Premier, you've told people to think about moving very early, but there's always going to be people that, that just simply won't until the water starts to come up in their homes. Mm -hmm. What's your advice to them? Just leave everything behind and, and get yourself out and forget about all those possessions that you have? <coughs> 
without any doubt, we need to put human life first and uh, there is every possibility that people will have very little time if they don't make early preparation. If you start to see water in your yard, get out, take your family and get to safety. This water could rise very, very quickly. We will have additional flood boats out and about uh, rescuing people and keeping people, getting people to safety. We have additional personnel arriving from other states today. But we need to make sure that we're working with them. We shouldn't be deliberately testing them. We should be doing everything in our own power to protect ourselves and leaving our emergency people to deal with the absolute extreme cases. Have you said the island um, may break away. Can you also confirm reports that the Oxley's restaurant may sink and also that the Wesley Hospital may need to be evacuated? Uh, yes, I can confirm that uh, Oxley's Wharf restaurant is very likely to sink sometime today. Salvage efforts were being made yesterday, but in the interests of safety, uh, those efforts have now, uh, have now stopped uh, and it is, uh, nothing further can be done for that restaurant and it is likely. It is, however, moored to the banks of the river with very strong steel cables. Uh, what is happening is those cables are pulling the restaurant down into the river. So it is very likely that we will see that restaurant sink into the river sometime today or overnight, uh, but it is moored onto the, uh, the river bank and my understanding it is likely to stay there. So the restaurant will be lost, but we don't expect to see it break, but we'll be monitoring that very carefully. Uh, in, in relation to the Wesley Hospital, uh, there is no expectation that the Wesley Hospital will, experiencing, will experience flooding, of course, because it's on quite a high hill. Current uh, work is being done just to ensure that the flooding is not likely to isolate that hospital. Uh, obviously, hospitals uh, need to be places where we can get supplies and doctors in and out of and uh, medical staff uh, easily. So there is some work being done at the moment just to guarantee that we can continue to get uh, uh, road links into the Wesley Hospital in every possible scenario. Uh, it's not possible to entirely rule out some evacuation of critical patients, but that would be an absolute last resort, frankly, uh, because obviously that would have its own risks for those patients. So that is an unlikely but you know, remote possibility. Can you say okay. what damage may be caused if the island does break away? Where is I'm it not. situated at the moment? Um, certainly uh, the options that are open to us are to allow, uh, is to allow the island to sink, actually, and that is not a bad option as long as it stays in place. And obviously uh, the maritime experts are looking at And that's exa exactly the same with the Oxley Wharf restaurant. It is actually safer to have it in place, sunk, and to be able to repatriate it later. Commissioner, we're getting reports that uh, Suncorp Stadium might be on fire after a transformer shorted out. Do you know anything about that? No, I can't comment on that. I have no knowledge yet. So the one other issue I meant to raise, uh, which I think is important, is uh, I think everyone understands that electricity and water do not mix and uh, Energex will systematically throughout uh, this event be having to shut down power in some parts of the city. They will only do that to protect your lives, but it will cause inconvenience and it will make a difficult job of uh, enduring this event more difficult. And I understand that that is going to try people's patience, but you will only have your power disconnected uh, if it is imperative to save your life uh, and to protect you and your property from what might otherwise be a catastrophic electrical events. So uh, you will be advised by Energex. We'll be, Energex will be doing updates about areas of the city that will be cut off uh, from electricity and obviously as soon as waters subside, they'll be reconnected as quickly as possible. Many parts of the CBD are being disconnected today. Uh, these are large buildings and they have substations in them, uh, small substations generally in a lot of those large high-rise CBD buildings, and some of those substations located in basements will flood today and flood quickly, and we need to disconnect that power, so that means the whole buildings uh, will be without power. So, again, people should not be going to work without checking and going into the city because many of those buildings buildings will be shut down. Uh, I, it's very important, I think, for myself and our senior emergency people to be based here at the Disaster Coordination Centre and be monitoring events not only here in Brisbane but across a very large region of Queensland. As you heard from my earlier report, uh, as massive as uh, the event in Brisbane may be, we have equally significant events in places uh, throughout regional Queensland, escalating situations in Chinchilla, uh, in Texas, in Gundawindi. So we'll be monitoring those today as well. Like the Prime Minister, I will be looking for the first reasonable and available opportunity to be out talking to people who have been affected by this flood, but I think uh, Queenslanders want to make sure that uh, uh, the person in charge is in charge today, and that's where I intend to be. Are there any plans 
plans to open any more evacuation centres around Brisbane? The Lord Mayor advises me that uh, the two major evacuation centres for Brisbane will be the RNA showgrounds uh, and the QE2 stadium, uh, but, he is very, we're, but he is equally now working, as I speak, with a number of major churches in and around the Brisbane area, all of whom have facilities such as halls uh, in local communities, often on high ground, where smaller evacuation facilities may be set up. So that, is, that process is happening now. I should say that happened spontaneously overnight in Ipswich, uh, there are official evacuation centres in Ipswich, but spontaneously local communities got together, opened up the local church hall, uh, took their sleeping bags down and kept everybody safe. So I thank them for, their, uh, for showing a bit of ingenuity there, and, uh, and that's, I think, made a big difference to the effort in Ipswich. CDF, can I just ask, uh, the staff that are coming forward today, are they... Slater. Mick Slater and I were talking to a number of uh, defence personnel who were there and he asked them to put up their hand if they were on leave and every hand went up. Uh, so these were people who were otherwise on leave and they'd come back off leave uh, and were there uh, willingly and uh, very enthusiastically helping in Theodore. Can I add that uh, while we are managing an immediate emergency response in a number of places here in the south -west, east and the southwest, we know that there are numbers of towns who are now over their flood uh, experience and moving very much into the recovery and rebuilding phase. Can I say to all of those towns, Major General Mick Slater uh, and his duties remain in, uh, with his focus on them. So as Brisbane uh, experiences this, the recovery and rebuilding process under the leadership of Major General Mick Slater continues full steam ahead. So we're not delaying that or being diverted by these events in Brisbane. Uh, Mick Slater has been already this week out in places like Bundaberg and Emerald and will continue to do so. So the rebuilding effort is happening at, alongside the emergency effort here in the south east. So to regional Queensland, nothing is being delayed because of these uh, events here in Brisbane. We are looking continuously to rebuild regional Queensland as soon as humanly possible. So Prime Minister, what assistance will the Commonwealth give for flood mitigation and preventing this sort of disaster? Uh, well, our assistance obviously flows in various stages as the flood uh, hits people and then we move into the recovery stage. Uh, under our natural disaster relief arrangements, what we do, uh, firstly, we provide the emergency payments that I've referred to. Then we provide assistance to households, to small businesses, to primary producers, uh, households to deal with the loss of household contents and effects, small businesses and primary producers to provide clean-up money and then concessional loans so that they can get back on their feet. Apart from that, we've uh, triggered the income support arrangements that I spoke about earlier. And then we move, of course, to dealing with the infrastructure damage uh, that floodwaters have done. Uh, we aren't in a position for all parts of Queensland to assess that yet. We can start doing assessments as floodwaters subside and we can see what's happened to roads, to bridges, to essential community infrastructure. Under our arrangements, we can uh, move to uh, better what was there before. They are not simply replacement arrangements. We can provide better than was there before. So, for example, if we were rebuilding a, a levy, then there might be a need uh, to make that at a, a, a better state in order to resist flood waters. Uh, but all of those assessments are going to have to be done as flood waters subside. It's going to be a major, major time 
task, assessing that infrastructure and recovery need. I'm pleased that we were able to make Mick Slater available to lead the recovery work here, of course, a very senior and distinguished member of our Australian Defence Force. We will continue, as we move to that phase of infrastructure rebuilding, to be working in partnership with the Queensland Government and with local governments so that we can uh, get the infrastructure back up and in appropriate state for the people of Queensland. That's why I say the task of the Federal Government uh, is to stand shoulder to shoulder in these difficult days, but also for the many, many months of recovery and rebuilding to come. Premier, will you be expanding Wivenhoe Dam and do you require federal assistance for that? Uh, I think it would be helpful for me to give you a, some information to understand the enormity of uh, what is on our back doorstep in, by way of water. In 1974, when there was no dam and no dam wall, the inflows into that catchment area coming down the Brisbane River were about one and a half million litres of water. What is now coming through that dam is two and a half million litres of water. Obviously, at the end of this event, we will do a significant review of the Wyvernhoe capacity, but I think we need to be realistic about whether any dam could hold back all of two and a half million litres of water. What we do know is that if that dam wall was not there, two and a half million litres would be coming through Brisbane. Uh, so we already have a very significant mitigation effect from this, for this event from the Wyvernhoe Dam. Uh, we will be looking to assess the capability and performance of the Wyvernhoe Dam after this event. We will similarly be looking at sensible, practical flood mitigation uh, across the state. But I should make the, the point that a number of the river systems that have flooded here in Queensland uh, already have large dams on those rivers. Uh, the Emerald Flood, for example, the Fairburn Dam is on that river system. In the Burnett, the Paradise Dam is there. It was built in 2005. Here in Brisbane, the Wyvernhoe Dam, and there are two dams on the system that went into uh, the St George area. So there are dams on these river systems. Dams do not stop floods. Dams can help mitigate and minimise some of the impact that might have happened without them, but a dam cannot stop the sort of flood that is coming across the plains of the Lockyer Valley and the catchment area into the Wyvernhoe air, um, system. Clearly we'll have to do updates, and I'm sorry I don't have that figure just yet. We've, we've still got unfolding circumstances. But in Brisbane, for example, the current modelling predicts 19,700 homes affected. If you took an average of uh, you know, three people in each house, you're, that, that's directly affected with their properties completely flooded. Uh, you're starting to get some very big numbers, similar sorts of uh, five, sorry, 4,000 homes in Ipswich. Uh, but we, when we say affected, we also have places where they don't have floodwaters, but they are completely cut off. They have not been able to leave the town, in some cases now for two and a half weeks, and we've been flying uh, supplies, medical supplies and food into them. So these, these floods have an effect, uh, whether they're in your backyard and coming through your floorboards, or whether you are just isolated and unable to leave your town. So we'll certainly be looking at uh, updating those numbers. But the other point I would make is that all of the uh, modelling and I made earlier, These, the, the city of Brisbane and the city of Ipswich are just vastly different places than they were in 1974. Uh, the uh, city of Brisbane is a major capital, uh, home to uh, more than a million people in the direct area, uh, so there is going to be a very big effect. Premier, yeah. is, so it's only early, but is the water responding to those commuter, uh, computer models that the projections are based on? Is it doing exactly what the computer thought it would? Uh, to date, the predictions are proving to be very accurate, particularly about uh, river levels. The uh, hydrologists predicted that Ipswich would get to somewhere between 18 and 19 metres around midnight last night. It got to about 17 and a half, and by 4am this morning it was 18.9. So within a couple of hours, they're, they're very high levels of precision. In terms of where the flood water is going, the early flood water seems to be going according to prediction, but we really have to see, I think, this afternoon as it starts to increase uh, the pace at which it moves uh, and if you're anywhere near any of the coloured lines on those maps, even if you're not directly in that area, uh, you should be ready to take precautions and be ready to move if you need to. Premier, there's been examples of paddock mine. Does that sort of concern you when um, 
so much of the rest of the response is so well organised with evacuation centres being set up. And secondly, um, when you have so many organisations and people pitching in and working together, um, how, how do you react though when you hear reports of looting? Look, in relation, we've only... The people of Brisbane and Ipswich have had a relatively short amount of time to prepare for this event, uh, and if they've gone out and stocked up their homes with groceries, then that was exactly the right thing to do. The last thing we want is supermarkets full of food and people completely isolated without food and unable to access it. So for many people, going out yesterday uh, and stocking up their uh, food supplies, their medic getting their prescriptions filled, etc., was a very prudent uh, preparation to make. Uh, so I I wouldn't necessarily assume that because supermarket shelves are empty that people have been irresponsible or panic buying. It is appropriate in these events. Shops are likely to be closed for many days. People may not have flood water in their own homes but may be cut off from getting out of their neighbourhood and getting to supplies. So uh, if people have got enough supplies in their home, then we don't need to use emergency resources uh, and send the SES or other people in by flood boat to supply them. So it's actually smart thinking. And if, uh, as I said, I'm happy if there's empty supermarket shelves, it means right now that people have got grocery supplies in their homes. Uh, in relation to looting, look, I don't think there's any word bad enough for uh, the people who do these sorts of things. Uh, these uh, people are out of their home in the most uh, dire of circumstances. <coughs> They've had to flee in the middle of the night. They've had, had little to take with them. Uh, and uh, whatever is left in their homes, I want that there when they get home. So uh, anybody who sees any of this sort of activity, please report it to the police. Police are out and about out patrolling and they will be in the days to come uh, to prevent this sort of activity. Uh, I think uh, the entire community reacts with disgust when we see people take advantage of uh, those people who are suffering this event. Premier, we've heard about the possible outbreak of disease following these floods. Has any preparation been in, put into place for this? Across Queensland, we've uh, had a very major supply operation over the last week of uh, additional tetanus shots, uh, hepatitis B, uh, and uh, uh, supplies of mosquito repellent because obviously in some parts we're worried about uh, mosquito-borne diseases. So those uh, supplies have been out there. Uh, doctors and health centres and clinics have been ensuring that people are, who are involved in the clean-up are... Uh, assisted to know what they should be doing. Uh, obviously, it's things like rubber gloves as well. I should say that as the clean-up starts, uh, people should be very careful. Going into muddy, uh, wet areas in thongs can mean that you're going to be standing on glass and metal, and uh, often it's those cuts after a flood that uh, make people more at risk of serious infection. To date, while we have seen some of those sorts of incidents, they've been relatively minor. We, are not, uh, we don't, haven't seen any large-scale public health issues. Sorry, the one other message that I did want to get out, and if you guys can help, that would be great. It seems completely ridiculous that I would be saying to people in this circumstance that we should uh, conserve water. We have massive amounts of water flowing past our doorsteps. However, it is possible that our water treatment plants could be affected by this flood and we may see some issues around drinking water in days to come. So people should be conserving water so that those water treatment plants that are working can continue to supply the volumes that we need. Uh, those people who uh, can get bottled water in, we will be able to get supplies of bottled water through the ADF. So it's not, it's not any reason to panic, but now's not a time, as, as crazy as it sounds, now's not a time to be, uh, to be wasting water because we don't quite know what might happen with our water supply as water treatment plants become affected. We have more than one water treatment plant in Brisbane. They won't all be affected, but we might have a, a, a limiting of supply in the days after. So please, don't go uh, drawing on that water supply any more than you need to, as strange as that might seem. <laughs> Can I, sorry, just to add two factual things just prompted by the various questions. Uh, the federal government has uh, triggered our health incident centres, so that will obviously work uh, alongside Queensland on any necessary public health response. And as uh, the Premier said, lots of uh, people uh, did go and stock up on the groceries yesterday. Uh, that meant a lot of people were therefore using ATMs, and there have been reports of ATMs that are out of cash. Uh, we're aware of those reports, uh, and the Reserve Bank will be working with our uh, banking uh, system uh, with obviously the individual banks to ensure that there are cash supplies but it is possible uh, that people could go to a location today where they normally go to access uh, cash and find that the ATM uh, doesn't have cash for them uh, and if they needed to access cash then obviously uh, they may have to look at another ATM to do that but the Reserve Bank will be working with our banks on ensuring that cash supply is maintained.
Okay, folks. Thank you very much. We'll do another uh, two-hourly update at 11.30am in this room. Thank you. Thank you.